Hi everyone! Welcome to the computation of average turnaround time and average waiting time using another type of CPU scheduling algorithm which is known as non-preemptive priority scheduling algorithm. Non-preemptive means that if the CPU is allocated to a process, that process will hold the CPU until its execution time. And when we say non-preemptive priority scheduling algorithm, here processes are executed on the basis of priority, meaning high priority does not need to wait for long, which saves time. In the following example, the lesser the number of the given priority would be the higher the priority. In case there are two or more process having the same priority, we are going to apply the concept of first come first serve to the process having the same priority. Now, in order for us to be able to compute for the average turnaround time, we need first to compute the turnaround time of each of our given process. And in order for us to compute the average waiting time, we need first to compute the waiting time of each of our given process. In the computation of the turnaround time, we need to determine first the completion time of each of our given process. So say, for example, we are given here five process. P1, P2, P3, P4, and P5. And then we also have here their corresponding arrival time. So the arrival time of P1 is 2, the arrival time of P2 is 0, the arrival time of P3 is 1, the arrival time of P4 is 5, and the arrival time of P5 is 4. And then we have here their priority. The priority of P1 is 2, the priority of P2 is 4, the priority of P3 is 2, the priority of P4 is 3, and the priority of P5 is 1. And of course, we also have here the worst time. So the worst time of P1 is 5, the worst time of P2 is 3, the worst time of P3 is 7, the worst time of P4 is 6, and the worst time of P5 is 8. I will now be creating a gun chart for me to be able to show to you when a particular process gets the CPU time for its execution and when it finishes its execution. This gun chart will also help us in determining the completion time of each of our given process and consequently we will be able to compute for the turnaround time and waiting time. So this is our Gantt chart. We are going to start from time zero in the Gantt chart. At this unit of time, which is zero, we check for the process which arrived in the ready queue. So we refer to our table. And in our table, we have here one process, which is P2, which arrived in the ready queue at time zero. As you can see, it has an arrival time of zero. So, which means that P2 is in the ready queue at time zero. And since it is only P2 which is in the ready queue at time zero, we are going to allocate the CPU to P2, even though it does not have the highest priority. So, as you can see, P2 does not have the highest priority here, okay, since its priority is 4. Okay, so since it is only P2 which is in the ready queue, we are going to allocate the CPU to P2. Okay, so in the gun chart, we now have here P2. And the burst time of P2 is 3. So this means that P2 will execute for 3 units of time. So in the gun chart, we are going to add 3 to 0 here. We now have here 3. Now, at this unit of time, which is 3, we check which process arrived in the ready queue. So we refer again to our table. Okay? 
So in our table, we have here two process, P1 and P3, which are in the ready queue at time 3. So the arrival time of P1 is 2, the arrival time of P3 is 1. So both P1 and P3 are in the ready queue at time 3. Okay. From between P1 and P3, we check which has higher priority. So, the priority of P1 is 2, the priority of P3 is 2. So, they have the same priority. Because they have the same priority, we are going to apply the concept of first come first serve to both P1 and P3. And based on the concept of first come first serve, we need to look at their arrival time. Okay? And the lesser or the lower the arrival time means that it will be given the CPU time first. So the arrival time of P1 is 2. The arrival time of P3 is 1. So P3 has lesser or lower arrival time than that of P1. So therefore, we are going to allocate the CPU to P3. So in the Gantt chart, we now have here P3. The worst time of P3 is 7. So, this means that P3 will execute for 7 units of time. So, in the gun chart, we are going to add 7 to 3 here. So, we now have here 10. So, we are done with the execution of P2 and P3. At time 10, we check which process are in the ready queue. So, at time 10, we refer to our table. We have 3 process which are in the ready queue. And this process are P1, okay, P4, and P5. So the arrival time of P1 is 2, the arrival time of P4 is 5, the arrival time of P5 is 4. So P1, P4, and P5 are in the ready queue at time 10. So from among P1, P4, and P5, we check which has the highest priority. So, the priority of P1 is 2, the priority of P4 is 3, and the priority of P5 is 1. So, P5 has the highest priority. So, therefore, we are going to allocate the CPU to P5. So, in the gun chart, we now have here P5. So, the worst time of P5 is 8. This means that P5 will execute for 8 unit of time. So therefore, in the gun chart, we are going to add 8 to 10 here. We now have here 18. Okay. So we are done with the execution of P2, P3, and P5. We have two processes which are in the ready queue. And these are P1 and P4. Which has higher priority from between P1 and P4. The priority of P1 is 2. The priority of P4 is 3. So, therefore, P1 has higher priority than that of P4. So, therefore, we are going to allocate the CPU to P1. So, in the gun chart, we have here P1. So, the worst time of P1 is 5. So, this means P1 will execute for 5 units of time. So, in the gun chart, we add 5 to 18 here. So, we now have here 23. Okay, and finally, we are going to allocate the CPU to the only process left in the ready queue, and that is P4. So, in the gun chart, we now have here P4. So, the worst time of P4 is 6, which means that P4 will execute for 6 units of time. So, in the gun chart, we add 6 to 23 here. So, we now have here 29. So, we are done with our GAN chart. We can now determine the completion time of each of our given process. We start from the completion time of P1. So this is P1 in the GAN chart and this is its completion time, 23. Okay, so this is P2 in the GAN chart. This is its completion time, 3. So this is P3 in the GAN chart and then this is its completion time, 10. So P4 is here in the GAN chart and then this is its completion time, 29. And finally, we have P5 here in the Gantt chart, and this is its completion time, 18. Okay, since we already determined the completion time of each of our given process, we are now ready to compute for 
the turnaround time of each of our given process using the formula completion time minus arrival time. So we start from the turnaround time of P1. Okay, so the turnaround time of P1 is equivalent to its completion time minus the arrival time. Okay, so we have here 23 minus 2. The turnaround time of P1 now is 21. The turnaround time of P2 is equivalent to its completion time, which is 3 minus its arrival time, which is 0. So the turnaround time of P2 is 3. The turnaround time of P3 is its completion time, which is 10 minus its arrival time, which is one. So the turnaround time of P3 is 9. The turnaround time of P4 is its completion time which is 29 minus its arrival time which is 5. So its turnaround time is 24. And finally, the turnaround time of P5 is its completion time which is 18 minus its turnaround, its arrival time which is 4. So the turnaround time of P5 is 14. Okay, so we are now done with the computation of the turnaround time of each of our given process. We proceed with the computation of the waiting time of each of our given process using the formula turnaround time minus words time. So we start from computing the waiting time of P1. So the waiting time of P1 is equivalent to the turnaround time which is 21 minus the words time which is Five. So it's equivalent now to 16. The waiting time of P2 is its turnaround time which is 3 minus its words time which is 3. So the waiting time of P2 is 0. The waiting time of P3 is its turnaround time which is 9 minus its words time which is 7. So the waiting time of P3 is 2. The waiting time of P4 is its turnaround time which is 24 minus its words time which is 6. So the waiting time is 18. And the waiting time of P5 is its turnaround time, which is 14, minus its worst time, which is 8. So the waiting time of P5 is 6. So we are done with the computation of both the turnaround time and the waiting time of each of our given process. We are now ready to compute for the average turnaround time and the average waiting time. So, we start from the computation of our average turnaround time. So, the average turnaround time is now equivalent to the turnaround time of P1, which is 21, plus the turnaround time of P2, which is 3, plus the turnaround time of P3, which is 9, plus the turnaround time of P4, which is 24, plus the turnaround time of P5, which is 14, so we add the 5 turnaround times and then divide it by the number of process which is 5. So 21 plus 3 plus 9 plus 24 plus 14 is equivalent to 71 divided by 5. So our computed average turnaround time is 14.2. We proceed with the computation of average waiting time. And it is equivalent to the waiting time of P1 which is 16 plus the waiting time of P2, which is 0, plus the waiting time of P3, which is 2, plus the waiting time of P4, which is 18, plus the waiting time of P5, which is 6. So, we add the 5 waiting time and divide it by the number of process, which is 5. So, 16 plus 0 plus 2 plus 18 plus 6 is equivalent to 42 divided by 5. So, our computed average waiting time is equivalent to 8.4. So these are our computed average turnaround time and average waiting time using non-preemptive priority scheduling algorithm.